Question number seven is a pretty long question, so let's read it slowly. Okay, Joan brings a cup of hot tea into a room and places the cup on a table at time t minutes after Joan places the cup on the table the temperature theta degree Celsius of the tea is modeled by the equation theta equals to 20 plus a e to the power of minus kt again theta equals 20 plus a e to the power of minus kt where a and k are positive constants you are given that the initial temperature of the T 90 degrees Celsius that means T equals to 0 theta equals to 90 we asked to find the value of A the T takes 5 minutes to decrease in temperature from again 5 minutes to decrease in temperature from 90 to 55 we asked to show that K is 1 over 5 ln 2 and finally we asked to find the rate at which the temperature of the T is decreasing at the instant when t is 10 and you're giving your answer in degrees Celsius per minute to three decimal places okay let's start slowly let's go through the solution line by line it's not a difficult problem okay so let's dive in we're starting with theta equals to 20 plus a e to the power of minus k t and we are told that the initial temperature is 90 so T is 0 theta is 90 so plug in the values 90 equals 20 plus a the value of T is 0 so e to the power of 0 is 1 so I have 90 equals 20 plus a clean this up and you'll get a equals to 70 and that's the value of a so again we are given the initial temperature of the T was 90 degrees Celsius and we asked to find the value of a so we use the idea of t equals to 0, theta equals to 90 to find the value of a and we find it to be 70. Good. It takes 5 minutes to decrease in temperature from 90 to 55 so we are asked to find the value of k. So which means t equals to 5, theta equals to 55. So plug into the equation. Remember now we know the value of a so we have 55 equals 20 plus 70e the power of minus 5k so when you clean this up you will get 70 e to the power of minus 5k will be equals to 55 minus 20 is 35 so 35 over 70 bring the 70 to the right hand side 35 over 70 is 1 over 2 so you will get e to the power of minus 5k equals to 1 over 2 the rest is easy take locks you'll get ln e to the power of minus 5k equals to ln 1 over 2 just remember that uh, 1 over 2 is 2 to the power of minus 1 so you can bring the minus 1 down so this becomes minus ln 2 and this minus 5k you can bring it down and ln e is 1 so you'll get minus 5k equals to minus ln 2 therefore k equals to 1 over 5 ln 2 okay find the rate at which the temperature is decreasing when t equals to 10 so when you are dealing with problems in which they ask you to find the rate we have to find the derivative okay so theta is 20 plus 70 e to the power of minus kt again I'll remind you of the formula y equals to e to the power of ax plus b so dy dx equals a e to the power of ax plus b that's the formula we are using so when we take d theta dt uh, this 20 when you differentiate you get 0 uh, this 70 just leave it alone differentiate e to the power of minus kt you will get minus k e to the power of minus kt that's what you see here so d theta dt equals minus 70 k e to the power of minus k t okay we asked to evaluate the rate at which the temperature is decreasing so basically we are trying to find the value of d theta dt when t equals to 10 so all you have to do is uh, plug in the value of k okay and plug in the value of t equals to 10 
Okay. Okay, t equals to 10. Use a calculator. So, I've done that in this line. The value of k and the value of t. Use a calculator and you will get negative 2.426 degrees Celsius per minute. Okay, you will get d theta dt as equals to negative 2.426 degrees Celsius per minute. Therefore, the rate of decrease will be, again, the rate of decrease will be 2.426 degrees Celsius per minute. I've made a note here. Let's read it together. When you write the rate of decrease, there's no need to write a negative. Okay, that's why you see here, there's no negative. Yeah? The rate of decrease, you don't have to write a negative uh, before the answer. Okay? Again, when you write the rate of decrease, there's no need to write a negative in front of the answer. Okay? Just take note of that. Question number 8. We asked to find the exact solution to 3 to the power of x times e to the power of 7x plus 2 equals to 15. So, we can take logs to both sides. I've done that in line number 1 here. Ln 3 to the power of x times e to the power of 7x plus 2 equals to ln 15. So we know that log mn will be equals to log m plus log n. So we're going to use this idea to break this up. So I'll write it as ln 3 to the power of x plus ln e to the power of 7x plus 2 equals to ln 15. Then I'll use the idea of log m to the power of n equals to n log m. So I'll bring the x down so I get x ln 3 plus 7x plus 2 again plus 7x plus 2 times ln e equals ln 15. Ln e is what? 1. Okay, so that's what you see in this line here. I have x ln 3 plus 7x plus 2 equals to ln 15. We're almost done. All we need to do is all we need to do is to make x the subject. So I have x times 7 plus ln 3 equals to ln 15 minus 2. And then, uh, cleaning this up, you'll get x equals to ln 15 minus 2, the whole thing over 7 plus ln 3. Good. Next, we will look at question number 9. The functions f and g are defined by fx equals to e to the power of 2x plus 3. So, let's make some remarks as we go along, yeah? Uh, e to the power of 2x plus 3x is real, so this graph will look something like this is y equals to 3, and we have this curve. Yeah, This will be e to the power of 2x plus 3. Okay, so again, uh, it will be shaped just like e to the power of x, except that you have to shift it up by 3 units. And this is what you have. The reason we, or rather the reason that I quickly drew this picture is to tell you that uh, for fx, they gave me x is, or x is for, what do you call this, x is real. Again, when you see this notation, it means that x is real. That means for all values of x. Okay. So instead of writing x is real, sometimes, I've mentioned this before, sometimes they write it like this in some books between negative infinity and infinity. Okay, so the domain is for all x, and therefore, by looking at this picture, you know the range of fx will be y is bigger than 3. Let's keep that in mind. Yeah? gx is ln x minus 1, x is bigger than 1. Careful, take note of this. Yeah? gx is ln x minus 1, x is real, but bigger than 1. Okay, now. Part A, we asked to find f inverse and state its domain. Part B, find fg and state its range. So let's go ahead and take care of uh, part A first. We always start by saying let y equals to e to the power of 2x plus 3. Replace y with x and x with y. That's what you see here. And after this, we have to make y the subject. So we have e to the power of 2y equals to x minus 3. And then what you can do is take logs to both sides, okay? 
When you do that, you can bring the 2y down and you can write it as 2y equals to ln x minus 3. And then uh, bring the 2 to the right, you can write y equals to, okay, you can write y equals to a half ln x minus 3. Now we can write down the answer f inverse x equals a half ln x minus 3. And we asked to give his domain. We worked out the range of f. Okay, range of f y is bigger than three, so the domain of f inverse x will be x bigger than three. We're done. Part B: Find f g and state its range. So g is ln x minus one. Take note: g is defined for values of x bigger than one. Okay. Okay, bigger than one. So that's done, yeah. We're looking for FG. Okay, FGX. So that's what I've written here. We are going to plug in ln x minus one into FX. Okay, so that's what I've done for you in this line. Where you see x in FX, you have to plug ln x minus one. So do that slowly. Use a bit of uh, properties of logs and all that. Uh, you can follow the reasoning here. Uh, the second line, yeah. The second line, I've brought these two up using properties of locks because I know that e ln fx equals fx, yeah. I've mentioned this before. So once I have this two brought up, it becomes e to the power of ln x minus 1 squared. So this whole thing now, I can replace it with using this idea, it's just x minus 1 squared. Again, e to the power of ln fx is fx. So e to the power of ln x minus 1 squared is x minus 1 squared. Don't forget there's a plus 3 here and we are done. So this is a, before we go any further, right, because we are going to state the range, uh, let's talk about this x minus 1 squared plus 3. This is a quadratic function and the minimum point here is 1, 3. Okay. Again, this is a quadratic function. If you sketch it, it'll be something like this uh, with a min minimum point of 1, 3. So, please be careful. Uh, when they define gx, they said x is bigger than 1. So, which means that we are looking at these values. yeah, Bigger than 1. So, 1 is not included. Therefore, the range of fg will be bigger than 3. Don't make a mistake and write bigger than or equals to 3. Yeah? Then you are including 1. So because 1 is not included, the range of fg is fg bigger than 3, following this number. Okay?